Hello everyone, a very good morning to all of you and let's start with the Hindu newspaper analysis discussion for the today. So guys, in the today's session, we are going to discuss entire analysis of Hindu newspaper. We will see all articles with their background, the detailed way forward and we'll analyze that how articles are important for our UPSC CSC examination. Now, before starting guys, I would like to tell you that you can download the entire PDF synoptic notes of this session. The PDF notes are available on our Telegram channel. Link for that Telegram channel is given in description box in YouTube or you can directly visit Telegram and can search there by typing Thinking Palette by Sahil. You will get the channel and you can download PDF from there. Now, let's see overview of this entire newspaper so that we can understand that which articles are actually important for our exam, which articles we should focus upon. So here we have the first page. The first article, no need for extra curbs on free speech on ministers of Supreme Court. So we will see this particular judgment that has been given by a five bench, a five, five judge bench. Then further moving on in this particular direction, guys, we do not... <coughs> Then moving on in this particular direction, uh, we do not believe in war, but will fight it if forced to. So recently, guys, what has happened in Arunachal Pradesh, there was confrontations that happened between Indian and Chinese soldiers. So in the line of that particular thing, the defense minister has made a statement while a bridge was inaugurated in Arunachal Pradesh. What is the name of this bridge? This is the Siom Bridge, S-I-Y-O-M. Siom Bridge is inaugurated. Fine. Then moving on in this particular direction. Changing address on Aadhaar now made easier, not important article for your examination, then advertisements etc have been given. So guys in city section, the regional uh, issues, fine, law and order related issues etc have been given. No need to go too much into the detail in this particular direction. Khan clears the reintroduction of Cherian into Kerala cabinet. Now this particular uh, issue is covered in one of editorial section also where oath by letter will see. So we will take this particular article there. Then guys, further moving on, after that, the political news, tenders, all these kind of a things have been given. So directly, we'll be reaching to the editorial section. And in editorial section, first article preventing animal cruelty is duty of the state. We'll see this particular article with respect to the uh, animal rights issues, GS2, GS4. Then further, overly differential. Fine. So guys, this particular article is talking about the judgment on demonetization that came yesterday. Already we have discussed that demonetization judgment. Now that demonetization judgment not discussed that whether, judge, whether demonetization achieved its stated goal or not. It just discussed that whether it was legally viable by the government or not. And Supreme Court had said that yes, it was legal by the government to go forward with that demonetization exercise. We have covered this topic in a very excellent manner in the previous class as well. Then further moving on, it is crucial for India to embrace multi-domain operations. So guys, we'll see this particular article with respect to the examination as what it is talking about. Uh, President Lula must negotiate Brazil's conservative polity cautiously. Article is more inclined towards the internal politics in Brazil. I will not recommend you to go too much in the detail in this particular article. Then guys, further moving on. A late but right call by Kerala governor. We'll see this particular article. So this article pertains to uh, the issue that we have already discussed that one of an MLA who got reinstated. So the oath, oath by letter, will understand in this topic. Then further, BJP's bid to make its mark in Punjab. Political article not important for the examination. The link between diabetes, wealth and awareness. Okay. So guys, here we see this particular thing that how that people having different, different wealth, diabetes is there. Okay. So these particular kind of a things and the state-wise data is given. Now, you are not required to go too much into the data that okay, in which state the people having what years of schooling are prone to diabetes, etc. Then moving on, coming to the text and the context page. Now, the first article on the legality of Israel's occupation. So recently, guys, we see this particular thing that the UNGA has passed a resolution that the matter with respect to the disputed territories should be referred to the ICJ. We'll understand this particular topic. Then further, moving on, how is India moving to regulate online gaming? We'll see this particular article with respect to the examination. Then recognition and redistribution, balancing identities at economic disparity. So guys, this article is basically uh, giving an analysis of the Nancy Fraser's philosophy. 
ओके नाउ आर्टिकल हैज अ काइंड ऑफ अ लिटरेरी अंडरटोन टू इट ओके सो इफ यू हैव अ हैबिट ऑफ रीडिंग द लिटरेरी आर्टिकल्स यू कैन रीज रीड इट बट विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द एग्जाम स्पेसिफिक एकेडमिक सब्सटेंस दैट इज नॉट दैट मच देयर ओके देन फर्दर मूविंग ऑन एज भारत जोड़ो यात्रा इंटर नाउ पॉलिटिकल आर्टिकल्स नो नीड टू गो इन टू मच डिटेल हेयर now guys here there are couple of articles that have come for example not all religious conversions are illegal we'll see this particular article then further public functionaries should be more responsible in their speech we'll see this article also pmcms have no disciplinary control over members of the council of minister we'll see this article also actually at uh, this article this article and the article that we have taken on the page number 1 okay which talking about the freedom of speech they are the continuation of one article only we'll take all of them then further moving on uh, after that guys in this particular direction um, uh, the basically uh, much important issues are not there but here constitution is the basis of vibrant democracy in india we'll see this particular article as what is the uh, address that has been given by the president supreme court raises concerns on small fishermen hit by pearls seen nets now what are these pearls seen nets we'll see this particular article then further moving on uh, here guys uh, permanent members not in hurry to see you and reforms jay shankar so minister of external affairs had made a statement that the permanent five member in united nation security council they don't want to bring reforms they are deliberately delaying it guys india is uh, india is pitching for a permanent seat in united nation security council okay because next year 2023 india will become most populous country of the world and the most populous country not having a seat in permanent p5 okay it is something which should not happen so india is pitching for united nation security council reforms which where it wants to expand the number of permanent members but the existing p5 members are not taking a call so that is something that has been provided beyond that nothing important is there in this particular article then guys china warns warns of measures against unacceptable travel restrictions so as covid 19 cases are increasing in china many countries have brought restrictions on the travelers who are coming to their countries from china so china had said that this kind of a thing will unacceptable restrictions will not be accepted then israel's bin benjur uh, 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 visit al qasa not important article alexa then india set to i17 billion cut in food fertilizer subsidy we'll see the article what it is talking about then guys after that uh, other articles are not very much important okay majorly the corporate trends and all such kind of a things have been discussed and then we have the sports page okay one thing guys i want to tell you that on business page and on international page you need to read only specific kind of articles for example on business page the articles which majorly pertain to indian economy issues in indian economy that is important and in an international page foreign policy or any development at international level which will impact india or india's interest that is important that you need to see so that is all about the overview and now guys let's take all the articles one by one in detail fine okay and as i have told you that you can download this particular synoptic notes this entire pdf from our telegram channel so guys in every class we start with taking a gs quotation which you can use in your answers so today we are going to take the quotation from jules renard so jules renard quotation it reads liberty is the right to liberty is the right to choose freedom is the result of the right choice liberty is the right to choose and freedom is the result of the right choices if we make the right choices if we make moral choices then those particular choices will lead to one's freedom now you can use this particular idea in gs paper number 2 you can use this particular idea in gs paper number 2 okay even essays uh, guys nowadays we see this particular thing that the essays that are coming they are quite a philosophical essays both section a and b are containing the philosophical essays so in essay part also the uh, the quotation can be utilized now moving on moving on so let's take the first article let's take the first article so guys here what we have done we have actually clubbed three articles from three different from different different pages all these three articles are actually the continuation of one article only one article has been broken in three parts and it has been published throughout the paper so first of all first of all guys let's read the heading of the articles 
ओके नो नीड फॉर एक्स्ट्रा कर्ब्स ऑन फ्री स्पीच ऑफ मिनिस्टर्स सुप्रीम कोर्ट फाइन दिस इज फ्रॉम पेज नंबर वन देन वी हैव दिस पर्टिकुलर आर्टिकल पी एम सी एम्स हैव नो डिसिप्लिनरी कंट्रोल ओवर मेंबर्स ऑफ द काउंसिल ऑफ मिनिस्टर्स से इज सुप्रीम कोर्ट नो दिस पर्टिकुलर आर्टिकल इज आफ्टर द टेक्स्ट एंड द कॉन्टेक्सट पेज दैट्स देयर एंड दिस आर्टिकल इज ऑल्सो फ्रॉम द सेम पेज ओके फाइन सो दिस इज दीज आर द आर्टिकल्स एंड नाउ गाइज लेट्स डिस्कस दैम वन बाय वन ओके फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वेयर दिस पर्टिकुलर आर्टिकल इज गोइंग टू बी इंपॉर्टेंट ओके वेयर दिस आर्टिकल इज गोइंग टू बी इंपॉर्टेंट तो गाइज दिस पर्टिकुलर आर्टिकल विल बी इंपॉर्टेंट इन जीएस पेपर नंबर टू जीएस पेपर नंबर टू इशूज रिलेटेड टू इंडियन पॉलिटी जीएस पेपर नंबर टू इशूज रिलेटेड टू इंडियन पॉलिटी नाउ बिफोर गोइंग इन दिस पर्टिकुलर आर्टिकल लेट्स डिस्कस सम ऑफ द बैकग्राउंड इंफॉर्मेशन लेट्स डिस्कस सम ऑफ द बैकग्राउंड इंफॉर्मेशन तो बेसिकली गाइज इट हैज ऑफन बीन सीन दैट मिनिस्टर्स मिनिस्टर्स they make certain speeches and as a part of these speeches ministers they often ridicule they often ridicule often they criticize often they criticize and sometimes it has also been seen that they make certain statements which become inflammatory statements sometimes they target a particular community they target a particular religion so a question has developed that when we talk about the ministers they have freedom to express which is guaranteed under article number 19 but at the same time under article number 19 when we talk about the right to free speech there are reasonable restrictions that can also be imposed on that particular right speech and in that particular capacity when we talk about ministers do minister needs to be extra cautious do ministers need to be extra careful while making this statement this is one question then second question that comes in this particular direction that if any minister if any minister has made a statement can government be held accountable can government be held accountable for the state made statement made by that particular minister yes or no so this particular matter reached to the supreme court and five judge bench was constituted in supreme court specifically to deal to discuss one matter what was that matter matter was this that can government be held accountable for ministers speeches government can it be held accountable under the principle of collective responsibility which binds the entire council of minister okay so this was this entire matter so basically guys what has happened so basically what has happened in this particular in this particular matter just a minute yes so what has happened in this particular matter supreme court has given its judgment and one uh, majority judgment has given one view point but there was one other judge also which has given a dissenting judgment as well so the majority of judges they have provided this particular thing that there is no reason to impose additional restrictions on the right to free speech of ministers ministers have right to free speech on those free speeches there are certain restrictions that are provided by the constitution of india apart from that no additional restrictions can be imposed they should not be imposed moreover it has also been provided that if a minister has made some kind of a speech then government government cannot be held responsible for such remarks government cannot be held responsible for such kind of a statements even sometimes ministers are making statement to protect the government okay for example government has brought an xyz policy and ministers will make some inflammatory statement to protect that policy even then the the government can not be held responsible moreover it has also been provided by the supreme court majority of the judges in this particular case that the principle of collective responsibility is there and basically the council of minister they act as a team they swim and sink together but the principle of collective responsibility will not be applicable on individual statements made by minister okay so if he has made any kind of a thing then he uh, the government cannot be held accountable moreover 
it has also been provided that in India there is a multi-party system and today when we talk about the governments the governments are being formed by the coalition and when coalition governments are there we find this particular thing that the different different parties have come together and the different parties have different kind of ideology even the council of minister that will be formed it will have the people from different different political parties so prime minister cannot hold every minister accountable for the statements that have been made is it clear or not so this is something that has been provided okay so moreover it is not even possible it is not possible all the times to issue a whip in this particular kind of matter but as i told you that one of a judgment one of a judge has dissented on this particular thing one judge that is justice bv nagaratna now justice bv nagaratna i told you in the previous class also that she will become first female chief justice of india so she had dissented on this particular thing and she had said this thing that when we talk about the ministers they need to be extra careful about the statements they are making moreover not only the ministers all the public servants who have some influence who have some control who have some following in the public they need to be very careful whatever they are saying they need to understand it thing that the dignity of common man the right of dignity of common man cannot be sacrificed on the altar of free speech so all public functionaries people of influence the celebrities they need to understand this particular thing so the great power comes with great responsibility moreover it has also been provided that uh, uh, article 19 sub clause 1 sub clause a okay was intended by the constitution framers with a particular intention so freedom of speech and expression was given with the intention that you will respect other people's right to dignity also so that is something that should be kept in mind and for that logic there could be a possibility that additional safeguards should be utilized when the ministers are making some statement so this is guys all about this particular supreme court judgment that has come i hope you have understood this particular article so guys if there is any doubt anything you want to ask you may write it in the comment box okay guys any doubt here fine now moving to next article moving to next article okay so guys here this article we have taken from text and context section okay and this particular article we'll see with respect to gs paper number 2 gs paper number 2 international affairs international affairs okay now before going in this particular article guys uh, i have uh, provided you some of the background information that you need to keep in your mind okay and after just understanding this particular background we will be able to understand we will be able to appreciate that what this present issue is all about so first of all understand the context recently united nation general assembly has passed a resolution in this particular resolution they had referred the matter to international court of justice they have provided that international court of justice should see the matters with respect to the occupation of territories by israel what are the legal implications of the territories that has been occupied by israel for that particular matter it has been referred to the international court of justice first of all guys as we talk about this particular vote resolution when it was put to vote fine india has abstained means neither india supported it nor india rejected it so this was the india's position now what exactly this particular matter is all about for that you need to understand little bit of a historical background so let's understand that historical background then we will come to the present issue so basically so basically guys you understand this particular thing that this is the dispute this matter is with respect to the dispute of palestine versus israel palestine versus israel now guys understand this particular thing that when we talk about the region of palestine the region of palestine now this particular region of palestine just a minute this particular region that you can see here here there is the holy city of jerusalem there is the holy city of jerusalem now when we talk about jerusalem guys it has been a very important city 
find Jerusalem and ne nearby regions are very important for Christian religion, Christianity, Judaism, Islam. Okay, and it has been provided that this particular region was the original home, was the promised land of the Jew people. But when we talk about this particular region, during the World War I, okay, just before the World War I in fact, what happened? Just before the World War I, the region that I have shown you, it was under the control of Ottoman Turks. It was under the control of Ottoman Turks. Okay, however, after the World War I ended, the region of Palestine which was under the control of Ottoman Turks, it came under the control of the British under the Britishers and it became one of a mandate of British. It became one of a mandate of British. Britishers controlled it. At that point of a time, Arab people were living in this particular region and it was provided that originally as it is understood to be the promised land of the Jew people, if the Jews want to come here, they should be allowed. They should be allowed. Now understand this particular thing, Jews were living in large number in Europe at this particular point of time. But what happened because of the religious regions, as I told you that Jerusalem is an important religious center for the Jews, Jews started to migrate in this particular region. Jews started to migrate after the World War I ended. Okay. Now guys, what actually happened? What actually happened? Particularly in nine, after the Hitler came to power. You know this particular thing that Hitler wanted to build a German, uh, Hitler wanted to build Germany consisting of a pure Aryan blood. And according to Hitler, Jews, Jews are a kind of a, Hitler believed that the Jews are an impure race. And because of that particular thing, Hitler started to persecute Jews from Germany. And therefore, after that, a large number of Jews, they started to go to their promised land, that is the region of Palestine. The region of Palestine, they came here. So, actually, what has happened? Just a minute. Fine. So, actually, what has happened? I told you that these Ottoman territories were placed under the UK's administration by the League of Nations in 1922 after the World War I and it stayed under the UK's administration from 1922-1947 and large number of Jews immigration happened from Eastern Europe to this particular place, particularly after 1930s when the Nazi persecution happened. Now, guys, as Arabs were living here already, and now Jews have also come here. So what happened? The disputes started to emerge between Arabs and Jews. Arabs said this particular thing that we are the original inhabitants of this particular place and the Jews should not be allowed to come here. But Jews said that this is our promised land and we have a right to settle here. And even, uh, and even when this particular region was made as a British mandate, under that particular agreement, it was provided that the Jews can come and can settle in this particular place. Now guys, as this particular dispute was emerging, as this particular dispute was emerging, there came an alternative and the alternative came was that United Nation intervened and United Nation proposed, United Nation proposed that the British mandate will over. First of all, British mandate on this particular region will over and it was provided that this entire region, this entire region will be created in two independent states. One will become the state of Palestine for Arab people and other will become the state for the Jewish people. It will become the state for Jewish people. So one Israel country will come in existence, which will be the country for Jewish and Palestine will become the country for the Arab people. Now, here I have provided certain maps. If you can see here, I have provided certain maps. So guys, this is the condition in 1946. So this entire green territory is Palestine. So entire region was Palestine in 1946. This was the United Nations plan in 1947. They provided that this white region will become Israel, the green region here, the West Bank, uh, the West Bank and here the Gaza Strip, this particular region will become Palestine and this proposal was given. What happened? Palestinians, the Arabs, Arabs rejected this particular proposal. They provided this particular thing that we don't want to give that much land to Israel. However, Jews accepted this particular proposal. Now, guys, what happened? Because the Arabs have not accepted this particular proposal, they rejected. 
ओके वट हैपेंड द फर्स्ट अरब इज़राइल वॉर हैपेंड फर्स्ट अरब इज़राइल वॉर हैपेंड एंड एक्चुअली इज़राइल इमर्ज पावरफुल इन दिस अरब इज़राइल वॉर एंड दे कैप्चर्ड लॉट मोर टेरिटरीज दैट वॉज गिवन बाय द यूनाइटेड नेशन प्लान सो इफ आई अगेन शो यू दिस पर्टिकुलर पिक्चर हेयर सो गाइज दिस इज this is the land that was given by this was the united nation plan that was given but they captured more land than that okay for example if you see if you see guys here fine here if you see israel have got more land than compared to this point okay so the israel actually got more land and israel became an independent nation in 1948 just after the british mandate got over so israel became an independent nation now guys as this particular war started what happened what happened 7 lakh palestinians were displaced okay historical palestine was divided in the state of israel okay i have shown you already and the israel also got the west jerusalem i told you jerusalem is a very holy city for all, all of them now the west bank region the west bank region okay including uh, including the east jerusalem it was taken over by jordan and the gaza strip Gaza Strip that was taken by the that was that came under the control of Egypt. Again, I will show you this particular map. Okay, so basically, this particular region, this particular region, it is called as the West Bank, West Bank, and the West Bank came under the control of Jordan. So this grey area that you can see, it is Jordan. So this West Bank came under the control of Jordan. This green area, it is called as Gaza Strip. It is called as Gaza Strip. It came under the control of Egypt. okay now fine obviously the egypt the jordan and other arab players were not happy with this particular development they wanted that more land should be given by israel and palestine as a separate nation should be given an independent status as of now palestine as a country recognized country has not come in existence the areas are under jordan's control west bank and under egypt's control gaza strip now this particular thing became a kind of an irritant between arab countries on one hand and between israel on another hand so this became a kind of a major irritant and in this particular dispute in this particular dispute fine largely who were involved israel was involved on one hand and egypt jordan syria okay they were involved on another hand now guys after this particular thing what happened again a war happened which is called as the six day war this war happened in 1967 and this particular war was again a very big defeat for arabs now what happened because after this particular war israel captured the west bank okay so the west bank which was under control of jordan it was captured by israel gaza strip which was under the control of egypt it was captured by again israel east jerusalem it was captured by them and syria's golan heights okay so i will just show you the golan heights okay now golan heights are here golan heights are here so basically the region of golan heights okay and even and even the sinai peninsula sinai peninsula which was under the control of egypt that sinai peninsula also came under the control of israel okay so what happened resulted this particular war resulted in israel capturing the west bank gaza strip east jerusalem golan heights and sinai peninsula all these regions came under israel's control so basically arabs were better placed before that war so they made a mistake by fighting this particular war however later what happened sinai peninsula sinai peninsula was returned to the egypt and other captured areas of palestinian syrian territory they remain under the control of israel only okay now what happened israel also declared that the entire jerusalem entire jerusalem both east jerusalem west jerusalem is the part of israel and it is an eternal undivided capital now as we talk about this particular thing i have told you that the gaza strip was also taken by the israel but israel started to withdraw from that particular region after 2005 okay so israel started to withdraw from gaza strip in 2005 but when we talk about this particular when we talk about this particular place guys it is still under the dispute now i have we will just be seeing this particular map to understand this particular matter more effectively so this is the condition this is the condition in 1947 majority of this region is the palestine then this was the united nation plan it was said that this white region will become israel and the green region will become palestine 
Palestinians, Arabs did not accepted this UN plan. Fine, the war happened between the Israel and Arab and Israel got more, Israel got more territories. And then guys, what happened after 67, after, in the 67, when the six day war happened, Israel got even more territories. Okay, now this is the Gaza Strip. This is the Gaza Strip. Here the Palestinians are living. Okay, and the state as Palestine, which is there, it is under PLO. Okay, so basically, Basically, it has been provided that the territories that Israel is having, these territories are, what is the legal status of these territories? Is Israel legally competent to hold these territories or it is not competent to hold these particular territories? To see this particular matter, now the question has been, now this particular matter has been referred to the International Court of Justice. So, United Nations General Assembly has passed a resolution and has asked International Court of Justice that it should give the opinion on legal consequences of Israel's occupation of a Palestinian land. Now guys, what will happen? ICG will take this particular case. It can lead either to a settlement with the party, okay? The party can withdraw the case. Israel can withdraw the case and say that, okay, we want to come to a compromise. If that happens, the compromise will come. If they don't want to come for a compromise, that what can happen, a trial will be carried. A trial will be carried and after a trial, a particular verdict will be given. This verdict could be like this, that the present status quo should be preserved. Verdict could be like this, that the Israel should transfer the land to Palestine or anything could be the verdict. Is it clear or not? But understand this particular thing that when we talk about the ICJ, International Court of Justice's ruling, it is binding. It is binding. But point is that how you will enforce that particular ruling, okay? It has no power to enforce them. If let's say they say that, okay, Israel has to transfer the territories to the Palestine, okay? And Israel refuses. How to enforce that particular thing? So for that, there is no power with them. Is it clear or not? There is no power with them. Now, understand this particular issue becomes very much politically sensitive in this particular time. What has happened? In Israel, guys, new government has been formed. And uh, Benjamin Netanyahu had again become the Prime Minister in Israel. Now, there is the present government in Israel. It is the six-party right-wing coalition right-wing coalition and right-wing coalitions they talk about the conservation of the status quo that has been there nationalism is an important theme now out of these six right-wing coalitions five are ultra orthodox and far right jewish nationalist parties far right jewish nationalist party they will not even be compromising for one inch of land is it clear or not? So there is a kind of a question that comes here is that there is now right wing, right wing nationalism, right wing nationalist party, ultra rightist, ultra nationalist parties have come to the power. How this particular entire matter will unfold? Okay. So this is something that we need to understand. Now guys, Israel-Palestine issue, Israel-Palestine issue is a very, very important topic in GS paper number two. IR. In GS paper number 2, IR. You might also be knowing it. Now, the point is that you please download this PDF and beyond that, you are not required to see for our GS papers. Is it clear or not? So, for GS papers, you are not required to go beyond that. However, if you are having PSI or optional etc., then you can go in little bit more deep. But for GS paper number 2, you don't need to go too much in detail. So, that is all guys about this particular article. I hope that you have understood it. Okay, if you have any doubt, you may ask your doubts, otherwise we will move to next topic. Okay, I can see a doubt here by Mohammed Rafi. Okay, Mohammed Rafi, you have a very beautiful name. Sir, you said day before yesterday, you might provide the information about which articles come under which topic in PDF itself. Uh, please provide. Okay, okay. Yes, 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 dear. I said that thing. Uh, okay, that will be done definitely from the next topic. Today, I will tell you, as I have done in the previous topic, that in which part it will be important, but from tomorrow, I will put it in PDF. My apologies for that. Yes, I have said that I will write in PDF itself, but actually it got slipped. Apologies for that thing. From next class, I will do it definitely. But today, I will tell you, okay? Now, fine. So, this particular article, guys, is again taken from the text and context section of a Hindu newspaper. Let's read the heading of article. Article says, how is India, how is India moving, how is India moving to regulate online gaming? Okay, now, 
This particular article I have taken yesterday also in the newspaper because this proposal was put forward by METI that is Ministry of Electronics and uh, uh, Ministries of Electronics and IT. Now, uh, we will understand this particular background first and after this background we'll go in little bit of a details that what is the proposal to regulate online gaming. Okay, so let's see some of background and before that where this topic will be important. This topic will be important in GS paper number 2. GS paper number 2, government regulations, government regulations, government laws and critical analysis of government laws, government regulations. Is it clear or not? Fine, some, some spillover will be there with GS paper number 3 also. I'll explain that thing as well to you. Okay, now before going in this particular article, let's take the basic background information. So basically guys, over, over the last few years, we have seen this particular thing that online games, they have, online games have become quite popular. Now these online games, they also entail a monetary element with them. They also entail a monetary element with them. And as money is involved, what is happening? People are becoming quite addicted. People are becoming quite addicted to these online games. Okay. Uh, uh, I'll just tell you one real life story. So I was, uh, I was in Mumbai. Okay. And I boarded a cab there. Okay. And that cab driver was least concerned in following the traffic norms. He was least concerned in driving that cab throughout the time he was playing some kind of an online game there. Is it clear or not? So the point is that people have become so addicted that they don't care about their work. Students don't care about their studies. Second thing is that basically people are taking money on loan. People are taking money on loan and staking that particular money on these online games. Is it clear or not? Third, it has also increased stress in the people. It has also increased the stress in the people. When people lose the money, anxiety issues, depression issues are coming. Moreover, guys, we have also seen this particular thing that with this particular development, there is also the profusion of, profusion of illicit loan apps. Profusion of illicit loan apps. So we find this particular thing that there are the app app mobile apps which are giving the loan to people at very high interest rate 30 percent 40 percent and when you fail to pay back there are the recovery agents which collect the money and because of this particular thing in southern part of india we have seen many of suicides also that has happened now these two things go side by side people take money from these loan apps then they use that particular money to stake in these online games if they lose the money what will happen it leads to stress anxiety and it leads to uh, uh, financial miseries fine so therefore this entire issue is to be now controlled now guys in this particular capacity now minister now the government government has provided that these online games will be regulated under the it rules 2021 it rules 2021 so basically it rules 2021 were passed under the it act of 2000 and IT rules 2021 basically tries to bring control over three things. Number one, under IT rules, OTT. Over the top platforms, they are regulated under IT rules. Now, OTT platforms are, for example, Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hotstar. So the content that is aired on that, it can be regulated under IT rules 2021. Second, it is applicable to social media intermediaries. So social media intermediaries are the platforms like Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. Then third, it is applicable on digital news, on digital news. So guys, today you see this particular thing that everybody buys a mic and they become a reporter. They do ground reporting. Okay. So they have, they, they, they become self-claimed journalist. So on the digital news, digital platforms, digital news websites that are there, they will be controlled, they will be coming under the IT rules 2021. Now government has come with a proposal that apart from them, apart from them, online games, apart from them, online games should be regulated. And for this particular thing, the proposal has been put forward, proposal has been provided. 
Now, what are the brief provisions of this particular proposal that has been provided? We are going to see them. However, when finally it will get passed, then you need to go little bit on more detail. Okay. Now, let's understand this particular thing. So, the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology, Ministry of Electronics and IT, METI, has released this particular draft and it provides that this particular thing that online games they aim that online games should be in conformity with the Indian laws and should safeguard the users who are playing that game against the potential harm that can be there. As per the proposal, it has been provided that first of all, what is an online game? What is an online game? Online game is a game that is offered on the internet and is accessible by the user by the user through a computer resource. It could be your tablet, it could be your desktop, it could be your mobile. If he makes a deposit with the expectation of earning winning, are you getting it or not? So if you are, for example, playing that fruit ninja game where just you are chopping those fruits, but there is no element of monetary expectation, okay, not applicable on them. Online games will be specifically those games which you play on computer resource and where you do, you make a deposit fine with an expectation of earning some winning now this winning could be in cash it could be in kind kind means you might win a motorbike you might win a car something like that you might win a gold something like that now it has been provided that the game operators who are offering these particular games number one they need to verify the users on their particular platform Fine. Now, government can come. Up till now, it's not clear, but government might come with some kind of an age criteria that only the people who are above 18 years of age can play these specific games where the money has to be staked. So, if that is the case, then the user's identity has to be verified by them, by the platform. Then, the terms of services, terms of services, okay, are needed to be explained to the users who are playing this particular game. Moreover, they need to explain the players in very clear and simple terms all the policy related to withdrawal or refund of their deposit. Okay, if you win, how you can withdraw that money. If you have deposited money, you want to withdraw, how that particular thing can be done. Okay, and all the measures for the protection of the players, it needs to be provided. Next thing that guys has been provided in this particular direction that these platforms also need to tell the people who are playing the game that what are the potential financial losses, what are the risks, it can lead to addiction, it is also to be provided. Is it clear or not? So such kind of warning messages needs to be provided. It is a responsibility. Then after that, it has also been provided that all the platforms which are providing these online games it is their responsibility that they need to appoint. They need to appoint a key management personnel or a senior employee as the chief compliance officer. Chief compliance officer. Chief compliance officer will ensure that all the uh, conditions that have been imposed, these conditions are being followed by these platforms. So for that particular thing, chief compliance officer will be there. He will ensure the compliances and there will be uh, uh, there uh, there will also be an appropriate mechanism for resolution of grievances okay so you have some complaint then it should also be there now guys understand this particular thing in past now here union government is trying to regulate these games in past many state government had come out with a proposal to completely ban these games for example tamil nadu karnataka we have seen had tried to ban these particular games fine why they had tried to ban because they are addictive because people lose their money out of that these games are unfair according to these state governments how unfair guys see this thing you are playing rummy you are playing poker or whatever game with a computer there can be a lot of manipulation that can happen you don't know whether you are playing with a real person or not so it is said that it is unfair it gives unfair advantage to that particular company but the uh, basically the judiciary has provided that you cannot completely ban these games why because there is a differentiation that has to be made between games of chance versus games of skill in the previous video i have discussed elaborately that what is the games of chance what is games of skill if you want to know a little bit more you can refer to that video but if you want to know it in precise in 30 seconds i'll tell you now basically games of chance are those chance where only luck prevails you don't have any control and games of skill is that where you can use your permutation combination your skill to predict an outcome so games of skill 
कैन नॉट बी कंप्लीटली बैंड एंड इट हैज बीन प्रोवाइडेड बाय द जुडिशरी दैट दीज फैंटेसी क्रिकेट रमी एंड ऑल दीज काइंड ऑफ अ थिंग्स आर एक्चुअली द गेम्स ऑफ दे आर द गेम्स ऑफ स्किल नॉट गेम्स ऑफ चांस सो यू कैन नॉट आउट राइटली बैन दम ओके सो दैट वॉज अ डिफरेंट प्रपोजल दैट हैज हैपन एंड इफ यू आर फॉलोइंग द न्यूज पेपर एनलिस रेगुलरली दिस इशू वॉज इन द न्यूज फ्यू मंथ्स बैक एंड वी हैव डिस्कस इट इलेबरेटली ऑल्सो सो दैट इज अ सेपरेट डेवलपमेंट दैट इज ऑल्सो देयर यू शुड नो अबाउट इट ऑल्सो ओके नाउ मूविंग टू नेक्स्ट आर्टिकल ओके मूविंग टू नेक्स्ट आर्टिकल फाइन गाइज इफ यू हैव एनी डाउट विल टू दिस पर्टिकुलर आर्टिकल यू कैन राइट योर डाउट्स इन द कमेंट बॉक्स आई विल रिप्लाई दैम नाउ ओके ओके वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑल नाउ तो नाउ दिस पर्टिकुलर आर्टिकल अगेन वी हैव टेकन फ्रॉम द हिंदू न्यूज पेपर इट सेल्फ आफ्टर द एडिटोरियल सेक्शन नाउ फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट्स रीड द हेडिंग ऑफ आर्टिकल आर्टिकल रीड्स नॉट ऑल रिलीजियस कन्वर्जन आर इलीगल सुप्रीम कोर्ट now this particular article guys we are going to discuss with respect to gs paper number 2 and gs paper number 1 and gs paper number 2 okay issues related to secularism issues related to secularism okay now directly we will not jump in this particular article why because then we will not be able to understand it okay we will first understand background and after understanding background i will go in this particular article and will make you understand this particular article now let's discuss the background first so guys what has happened what has happened when we talk about india when we talk about india india follows the model of secularism india follows the model of secularism now we have in the constitution of india article number 25 to 28 we have article number 25 to 28 which specifically provides the right to religion however after 42nd constitutional amendment act the word secularism got added specifically in the constitution of india fine in the preamble the word secularism got added now the point comes that when we are a secular nation we give the right to people that they can profess their religion they can practice their religion they can propagate their religion are you getting it or not now the point comes that when we give the power to propagate okay so right to conscience profess practice propagate religion is given under article 25 so question comes the propagation of religion propagation does it means that you can convert other people in your religion okay the propagation does it includes the conversion or not now guys when we talk about the conversion on conversions a status is very clear a conversions can not be done as a matter of force forceful conversions are not allowed b conversions can happen only when there is genuine change of heart conversions can only happen when there is genuine change of Alright, are you getting it or not? Now, guys, on the conversions, there is one more matter that goes side by side. For example, marriage. Now, certain people change their religion because of the marriage. Will marriage be called as the genuine change of heart or not? Are you getting it or not? That is a different matter, and on that particular matter, there are many judgments that we have. is it clear or not basically guys when we talk about uh, judgments i'll give you certain example for example there is a hadiya judgment by the uh, hadiya judgment by the supreme court where supreme court has provided that a person wants to change religion they are absolutely free if they are changing it by marriage if they are changing by any other reason they are free there is one more judgment by allahabad high court according to now actually allahabad high court has two conflicting judgments one judgment says that change marriage is Uh, basically marriage doesn't entails always a change of heart people sometimes are uh, people sometimes are changing religion just for the sake of marriage that conversion will not be allowed there is one more judgment of the allahabad high court they say that no it can be allowed so point is that guys when i now what i am trying to explain you okay i am trying to explain you this particular thing that the matter of conversion this matter is quite debatable there are many conflicting judgments of the high courts fine in this particular direction 
and different different state governments in the past two years particularly have come out with the multiple laws where sometimes they are trying to regulate conversions they are trying to stop particular type of conversions so there are many matters on this particular light that are going on so you should not be confused because many number of times you will find that different different matters different different judgments are there so there is a lot of confusion on that particular thing in the main circle itself fine now Basically guys, in this particular matter, what has happened, as I told you that the state governments are trying to control the conversions. So Madhya Pradesh government recently came out with an act. Madhya Pradesh government recently came out with an act. And the name of that particular act was Madhya Pradesh Freedom to Religion Act 2021. And this particular act provided this particular thing that any person who want to organize a conversion, any priest who want to organize a conversion, okay, or any conversion if it is happening, then at least a two month notice, a 60 month prior notice has to be given to the district magistrate that a proposed religious, uh, that a particular uh, conversion is going on. Is it clear or not? Moreover, at the same time, if conversion is by force, by undue influence, coercion, allurement, allurement means attraction. That conversion is not allowed. I have also provided you. Now, the major contention comes that the 60 day notice. Now, this particular matter was this particular matter was contested in the Madhya Pradesh High Court. Why? Because it was said that if a conversion is going on, if let's say a person's change, heart has changed and the person want to convert the religion, what will happen in this particular matter if 60 days notice is given, then the religious elements might try to interfere. They might threaten a person that if you change your religion, we'll punish you. Such kind of a things will happen. So this 60 day notice period is not, should not be given. This 60 day notice will take away the right to conscience, will take away the right to propagate. So it was challenged. Now what happened? Madhya Pradesh High Court then imposed a freeze on this 60 day limit. They say that no, there is no need of giving this 60 day uh, uh, prior order. Now the Madhya Pradesh government approached the Supreme Court. They approached the Supreme Court. They said this thing that the Madhya Pradesh High Court has up, uh, withheld, has 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 basically uh, put a freeze on this 60 day order that we provided by the Act of 2021. Now what has happened? Supreme Court has given the judgment and uh, had given the uh, basically observation in this particular direction. Finally, the matter has not been solved. Okay, this matter will be again be debated on February 7, that is the next date that has been given. But now, Supreme Court has provided this thing that all religious conversions cannot be presumed by a state to be illegal, cannot be presumed by that they are illegal. You should not, you should not basically assume that it is happening by force, fine. So, it is provided that this 60 day notice is not something, now as of now what has happened? As of now, what has happened, basically, the Supreme Court has provided this particular thing that the 60 day freeze that was imposed by Madhya Pradesh High Court, it will continue. It will continue. The Supreme Court has not revoked the, has not revoked the Madhya Pradesh High Court's freeze. But Supreme Court had said that we will hear this particular matter in much more detail. Now, there is one particular judgment that has been, that, that is important, which the Madhya Pradesh government will use. Now, let's understand, let's read the judgment first and then we'll understand the implications of this particular judgment. So, there is Rev. Stanislaus versus State of Madhya Pradesh case. Again, I'll repeat, Rev. Stanislaus versus State of Madhya Pradesh case. Now, this judgment was given in 1977 and it interpreted Article 25 of Indian Constitution, which gives the right to conscience, profess, practice and propagate religion. And they said this, that under Article number 25, the word propagate does not give the right to convert another person to one's own religion. Okay, fine, it doesn't gives you right to convert some person to your religion. You can propagate your religion, but you cannot convert. Fine, it has been provided. Constitution bench provided that there is no fundamental right, no fundamental right to convert person to one's own religion. So, Madhya Pradesh government is using this particular judgment that as per this particular judgment, conversion is not a fundamental right. And if conversion is not a fundamental right, we can regulate the conversion. Are you getting it or not? We know this particular thing, guys, that in the constitution of India, 
basically we have article number 13 which specifically provides that if any law will violate fundamental right then that particular law can be declared as ultra virus to constitution is it clear or not but other things government can regulate so what government is explaining government is saying that conversion is not a fundamental right if it is not a fundamental right we can regulate it and if we can regulate it madhya pradesh high court or any other court of law fine should not should not ban, should not uh, put a stay on our law. This is the issue that has come in this particular direction. Okay. So guys, I hope that you have understood it. Uh, if it is clear, please very good. And if you have any doubt, you may ask your doubts. Fine, I will take the doubts and then we'll proceed to next article. Okay. Fine. Uh, what is the timing of the class? Uh, so dear timing of the class, is around 7 30 a.m okay some days it go here and there only reason is this that we start working from 4 a.m but there are so many articles preparing the articles making the synoptic notes doing research writing all these backgrounds it takes some time so tentative time of the class is around 7 7 30 okay but it might be some 10 15 minutes so you can join the telegram channel on telegram channel we post the link and you can get the information okay now moving on guys uh, okay guys one small request if you are liking the video please do hit the like button okay please do hit the like button if you are liking the video if you feel that uh, it is helping you out okay now we reach to editorial section first editorial preventing animal cruelty is a duty of the state preventing animal cruelty is the duty of state let's uh, see this particular article but before that the article guys will be important will be important with respect to GS2 article will be important with respect to the GS2 scope of fundamental right limits of fundamental right okay as well as the article will also be important for GS paper number 4 ethics GS paper number 4 ethics okay why I will start this particular uh, article I will start this particular article with one quotation it is provided now it is said that the moral progress of a nation moral progress of a nation can be judged by the treatment that nation gives to its animals okay so if now why because guys the when we talk about animals they can't raise their voice animals they are helpless in front of humans so when the helpless voiceless creatures are concerned and when you are giving them respect when you are giving when you are ensuring their survival that is the proof of the moral development of that particular nation this is one quotation you can use in essays you can use in your essay uh, in your ethics paper now this particular article guys that has come now this article is with respect to the festival of uh, or, or the bull the the, the 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 sport of jalikattu bull taming sport of jalikattu now jalikattu as a bull taming sport it is uh, it is uh, practiced in tamil nadu particularly the belt around madurai and during the pongal celebrations jalikattu sport festival is is observed now guys understand this particular thing over the years there is a kind of a issue contention that has been developed the contention is this that whether the jalikattu as a bull taming sport can continue or it can not continue I will explain that particular background to you in little bit more detail because that is not much discussed here in this particular article so that background will understand and after that we'll come to this particular article as what this article is actually talking about okay so let's discuss some of background let's discuss some of background okay background so basically when we talk about jalikattu okay uh, guys uh, my pronunciation can be wrong okay apologies for that thing jalikattu so basically there are the people who say that it should not be allowed should not be allowed it should not be allowed then there are the people who said who said that it should be allowed it should be allowed it should continue now both of them have their reasons for this particular argument now people who says that the jalikattu should not be allowed they say this particular thing that it leads to it leads to cruelty on animal okay 
basically it is said that these bulls these bulls that have to be tamed now if uh, uh, here guys you can see this particular photograph you can see this particular photograph so here these bulls they are to be tamed by they they, they are to be tamed by these people so it is being said that number one that it leads to cruelty on animal why because these bulls they are kept in very confined kind of closures okay so it has been said that uh, in order to make these bulls angry sometimes they are fed with liquor sometimes some chemical is put is poured in their eyes so that they become more aggressive they are poked with some kind of a sharp object so that they become more aggressive is it clear or not so this leads to cruelty on these animals second thing guys that has been provided is that the people who are participating in these particular sports also they get injured also they get injured now guys understand this thing that there are certain prize which are there in this game for example a pressure cooker a tv a juicer mixer grinder so there can be motor bikes are also there sometimes so people who participate they get injured fine thirdly guys it is provided this particular thing that it is violative also of prevention of cruelty to animals act prevention of cruelties to animal act so it was said that it should not be allowed fine then guys there are the people who say that no we can allow it we can allow it and in this particular direction there are many reasons number one it is said that it is the part of culture it is the part of a culture since so many of the centuries it is being practiced and already guys the indian constitution provides the right to the people that they can practice uh, uh, that they can follow their culture is it clear or not when we talk about india being the land of diversities the cultures can be preserved okay so it is a part of a culture second thing guys it has been provided that actually actually it helps in the conservation of native breeds of bulls it helps in conservation of the native breed of bulls now understand this particular thing guys that the bulls that are being uh, the, the bulls that are being deployed in this particular sports they would have gone extinct if these people would not have con con uh, have not conserved them is it clear or not so the native breeds of the bulls that are being used they are uh, today uh, they, they are they are there today because these people are preserving them is it clear or not thirdly thirdly it has been provided that this sport has a sentimental value also has a sentimental value also so therefore it should be allowed now this is the matter that was going on now guys what happened in 2014 in 2014 animal welfare board of india animal welfare board of india reached the supreme court and animal welfare board of india as a supreme court that the jali kattu should be banned okay now at that point of a time what happened jali kattu got banned as well okay i will show you this particular thing in the article itself <clears throat> okay fine yes so basically what happened basically what happened in 2014 animal welfare board of india approved supreme court and the judgment was given in the case the name of the case was animal welfare board of india versus a nagraj case and in this particular case supreme court declared jali kattu as illegitimate they said that the practice of jali kattu is cruel to animal it causes unnecessary pain and suffering on animal and therefore they banned it but after that particular thing guys what has happened tamil nadu government again tried to bring an amendment in the pca act okay prevention of cruelty against animals act they tried to bring an amendment and they allowed the jali kattu again then again that matter reached to the supreme court and now the supreme court will give again the final judgment that whether the jali kattu can be allowed or not is it clear or not fine now okay so see this particular thing so what is happening now the constitution bench of the supreme court will deliver its final verdict okay it will deliver its final verdict on the validity of tamil nadu's law where they permitted again the jali kattu after 2014 guys this actually happened okay so basically we are going to little bit trace the history and we will see that whether such kind of uh, such kind of uh, law that was resurrected by tamil nadu can it sustain or not so basically guys when we talk about uh, 
द पार्ट थ्री ऑफ द इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन सो पार्ट थ्री ऑफ द इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन डील्स विद द फंडामेंटल राइट डील्स विद द फंडामेंटल राइट नाउ बेसिकली द पीपल हैव सेड दैट इवन द एनिमल्स शुड बी गिवन द फंडामेंटल राइट even the constitution envisage fundamental rights to animal also so on that particular pretext these festivals cannot be allowed now a question comes that when we talk about the article 14 article 21 article 14 right to equality article 21 right to life and personal liberty they have been given by the constitution on persons on persons now persons who is a person persons means the human beings in some cases the corporations partnerships trust they also come in the definition of person but in definition of person nowhere animals are mentioned so this this particular thing cannot be asked jallikattu's ban cannot be asked on the basis that it is breaching the fundamental right of animals because fundamental right are given to person and in the definition of person animals don't come this is one uh, explanation that is there but guys at the same time we know this particular thing that we have the directive principle of state policy dpsp okay we have the fundamental rights fundamental duties sorry dpsps are contained the fundamental duties are contained in part 4 dpsps are contained in uh, sorry fundamental duties are contained in part 4a dpsps are contained in part 4 and in both the dpsp as well as fundamental duty an obligation has been imposed dpsp imposes obligation on state fundamental duties imposes obligation on citizens that they need to show compassion towards other forms of life as well including animals is it clear or not so this is something that has been provided moreover we also have the prevention of cruelty to animals act pc act 1960 now first of all when we talk about the pca act it criminalizes several actions that causes cruelty to animal okay but at the same time it also exempts animals from experiments now guys sometimes we are doing some experiment on animals for the science purposes you are dissecting a frog or you are doing some kind of an experiment so such animals are exempted from exempted under the pca so this is the pc now guys basically basically it has been provided that supreme court held in a nagaraj case i already told you in the a nagaraj case it said that this particular thing that the jallikattu festival it jallikattu sports it falls within the boundaries of the actions that are forbidden it cannot be allowed now in order to in order to bypass the supreme court judgment in 2017 tamil nadu government amended the prevention of cruelty against animals act now the moment they did this particular thing a question came number question was this can tamil nadu government do that do they have a power that they can do that particular thing can they amend the prevention of cruelty uh, the prevention of cruelty against animals act so basically the tamil nadu government said that they can do this particular thing moreover what happened they passed this particular act and even they took the approval from president even they took the president's approval for this particular law is it clear or not now as we talk about the legal position on this particular amendment so guys we need to see that there is entry 17 in the concurrent list entry 17 in the concurrent list schedule 7 of the constitution so basically this entry 17 specifically gives the power that the tamil nadu government can legislate on this particular matter so by this particular thing they have done it okay then this is the issue that comes in the nagaraj case it has also been held that the jallikattu itself leads to violation of article 51a g as well what is article 51a g it requires a citizen to protect and improve the natural environment forest lakes reservoirs and this point to have a compassion for the living creatures is it clear or not moreover in this particular article it was in this particular judgment a nagra judgment supreme court has given one more alternative definition with respect to the scope of fundamental rights the supreme court provided this particular thing that when we talk about article number 21 article number 21 talks about right to life but according to the supreme court right to life now the definition of life has evolved the definition of life has evolved okay life is it only human life or is it all type of life okay so basically it has been provided that the meaning of life has expanded and includes the right against disturbance to basic environment okay animal life must also be treated with honor animal life also be treated with dignity so this is something that has come now again the supreme court five judge bench will give their judgment so this five judge bench will be 
five judge bench will be focusing on certain issues that number one do animals have personhood do animals have personhood why because fundamental rights are available to persons are animals a person if they are persons they will also enjoy fundamental right and jallikattu might get banned again is it clear or not okay <laughs> safeguards that are available whether these safeguards only for humans what is the real meaning of life real meaning of life is human life or animal life as well is the, there which means the high, which will come in definition of life so all these particular matters will be finally be dealt by supreme court and they will give their final judgment in few days in in few more days so as that particular thing will come we will discuss that particular thing again in the newspaper So guys, that is all about this article and now we will move to the next article. Okay. So, it is crucial for India to embrace multi-domain. Okay. So, this particular article, this particular article guys, we will see with respect to GS paper number 3. GS paper number 3, Issues of National Security. GS paper number 3, Issues of Na National Security. Okay. Even in GS paper number 3, Defense Preparedness. Defense Preparedness of India. We will see this particular article. Now, guys, one thing I want to tell you here before moving in this particular article is that you are not required to go too much in detail in this particular article. Article is talking, article is going too much in the technicalities of the warfare. Okay, so you don't need, you are not required to go in that much technicalities for the sake of our exam. Okay, you will know this particular thing if you will, if you will read this particular article. Fine. Now, first of all, now, first of all, guys, understand this particular thing that uh, basically. We see this thing that the China-India skirmishes, China-India confrontations have increased a lot in the past few days. Recently, there was the dispute between India and China in Arunachal Pradesh in Tawang sector. Before that, in 2020, there was a dispute in Galwan Valley. After that, many other skirmishes and conflicts have also happened between India and China. So basically, China today is flexing its muscle. China is becoming a big adversary. China is becoming a kind of a big adversary for India. And India needs to have its defense preparedness intact. We need to enhance our defense capabilities to meet the Chinese challenge. Now, the article says this particular thing, guys, that in the past few days, Chinese threat was not discussed too much because many other things came. For example, for example, uh, election issues came there then bridge collapse in morbi happened okay then the bharat jodo yatra was there g20 presidency came so these issues became more important they came in the national light and therefore the chinese threat it became less important now the author is talking about that in order to enhance the military capabilities we need to we need to just a minute i will zoom it out so that you can see it more clearly yes so the article is talking about this particular thing that in order to enhance the capability of our defense forces, our armed forces, we need to incorporate multi-domain operations. Multi-domain operations. Now, what is the meaning of this multi-domain operation? So, basically it is being provided. Now, see this thing. For example, there is a Navy. Navy is operating, for example, in its own silo. There is Air Force. Air Force is operating in their own compartment. Are you getting it or not? Then there is Army. Okay, the army is operating in their own compartment. So it has been provided that, see, today we don't need to focus today when we talk about, guys, the actions. Now the war, see this thing. The war today, it is fought on land, it is fought in sea, it is fought on air, cyber warfare also you might be hearing, space, even the space weaponization is now going on, okay, electromagnetic spectrum, okay, the war is there in all these domains. Now, these domains should not be divided. Is that clear or not? We need to see it as one domain. So, when we talk about the multi-domain operation, it is not just action on land, 
land, sea, air, space in separate capacities. Rather, guys, it is being provided that in multiple domains, at the same time, all the actors together, they should have capability that they can act. For example, for example, guys, here there is one example that has been given. Okay. For example, here there is one example that is given. We'll take this particular example. Okay. So, MDO architecture. MDO architecture uses any sensor and the best positioned shooter to accomplish objective. Here, for example, guys, here we can see this particular thing that MDO, MDO and its substructures. Okay. For example, uh, for example, guys, you see this particular thing. Suppose this is the coastal boundary of India. Okay, and here there is a naval ship. Here there is a Indian Coast Guard ship, and the Coast Guard ship picks a signal that there is a kind of an enemy ship. There is an enemy ship which is approaching towards India. Okay, now the signal has been picked by the Coast Guard ship, but the ship might not reach to this particular ship in the time. In time, so what they can do? They can direct aircraft. They can direct the aircraft of air forces. They can direct the aircraft of the air forces that you need to tackle, you need to engage with this particular ship. So what happened? The signal was picked by, let's say, one wing, but the execution was done by other wing. Are you getting it or not? So point is that we need to instill multi-domain capabilities, multi-domain capabilities where one wing will be operating in other domains. Okay, they will not be restricted within their own compartment, within their own silos. This is the idea. Okay, so multi-domain is not just action on land, sea, air, cyberspace, electromagnetic spectrum in isolated compartments. Rather, it talks about that how all of them can converge here. So it comprises the operations across the multiple domains, contested spaces, all such kind of things. Now further, it is being provided that, that when we talk about the MDO architecture, MDO architecture uses any sensor and the best positioned shooter to accomplish the objective. Fine, this is something that has been provided. Now, in order to ensure the multi-domain operationality, multi-domain capabilities, there are certain things that need to be done. Now, understand this thing. Though guys, I have provided you in much more detail the notes here as well, but you are not required. If you want, you can read that, but you are not required to go too much in the technical details because such questions are not asked in the UPSC examination. You will know this thing if you have seen the previous year questions. Okay, so first of all, what we need to do, we need to ensure that all the sensors and all the input sources, all the information, fine, must be capable being hosted on a MOD architecture platform. There needs to be a common platform where all the information is being put, where the all information is being streamed. Are you getting it or not? For example, some signal is being picked by Navy, some signal is being picked by Army, some signal is picked by Air Force. All these particular things needs to be, all this information needs to be there on one MOD, fine, architecture platform. The next thing, all solution providers, executors, all the executors, okay, they must be able to receive these inputs and instructions, okay. So, information should be there and that information should be available to Army, Coast Guard, Navy, Air Force, etc. Then third, the link to the main structure, okay, uh, if the link to the main structure is not available, if it is jammed, then mission command, command characteristics of distribution control would come into play so that operators can continue. Now, we know this particular thing that the cyber warfare has also become a real threat. So, sometimes these signals, sometimes these inputs can be jammed. So, for that particular thing, fine, there needs to be, uh, there, uh, there needs to be some alternative methodology also that can be used, okay. Is it clear or not, okay. Now, basically guys, after that, it has also been provided. After that, it has also been provided that number one, we need to, in the short term, in, in the short term, we need to ensure that physical domains must be stabilized. First of all, if we want to focus on multi-domain operationality, if we want to focus on multi-domain operationality, number one, basic capabilities of the forces within themselves need to be stabilized. For example, we find this thing that the Air Force today, 
is have uh, basically the aircrafts operational aircrafts they are going down so suitable number of aircrafts need to be there with the navy suitable number of aircraft carriers suitable number of vessels needed to be there okay so prop they need to be properly stabilized critical deficiencies that are there in army navy it need to be fulfilled secondly the networks okay the networks which will connect all of these services together they needed to be protected against cyber threats okay then it has also been provided that uh, in the long term a pilot project should be started on an experimental basis a pilot project needs to be started to see that what are the challenges that will come what are the issues that we need to keep keep in mind and then finally to ensure this multi domain operationality the personals okay the personals in the defense forces they needs to be trained they needs to be trained okay and that training should start now is it clear or not so this is the multi domain operationalities that needs to be focused that needs to be emphasized okay so this is all guys about this particular article fine i hope that you have understood it and now we'll move to next article okay so guys briefly i will take your comments and your doubts if you have any sir in uh, okay sir uh, please speak in hindi okay uh, fine i'll try if uh, it uh, sir is rail case what is the role of india or how it make a, how how it impact in india see in israel palestine issue india's role is this see we are maintaining independent relation with israel but at the same time india has proposed a two state solution okay sir bulls are used in agriculture is it not a cruelty now see this thing that see uh, basically when we talk about the bulls used in the agriculture or any such kind of a thing it is something which is allowed okay please give us mains question okay so we are giving the mains question already answers okay we'll see on that also okay sir please give two words on pilot project in as an experimental project so before bringing a project in full scale execution you experiment that particular project on a small limited scale that is a pilot project okay now moving to this particular article and guys this is an important article this is an important article for our gs paper number 2 polity important article for gs 2 polity okay now this article is from the editorial section the article reads the late but right call by kerala governor okay now basically actually what has happened actually what has happened a minute yes so few days back few days back one of an mla in the state of kerala made certain statements against the constitution of india he said this particular thing that the constitution of india is not suitable to the indian circumstance and many such other kind of a statements were given which was not appreciated in good taste because they were critical of constitution now at that point of a time guys what happened basically it was asked that this particular mla should resign from his position in cabinet okay so he was a minister that mla was a minister so it was asked that that, that he should resign now after that particular thing guys what has happened again again now the kerala governor fine has granted the approval to reinstate kerala governor has granted the approval to reinstate this mla back to the kerala cabinet back to the kerala cabinet so he resigned earlier i told you because he had made certain statements against the constitution now guys understand this particular thing basically when we talk about that whether this particular person can be inducted back or not so in this particular issue there is one controversy that has been developed now understand this particular thing first of all if an mla wants to become a minister before becoming a minister an mla has to take the oath fine oath of office and oath of secrecy has to be taken now that particular oath of office and oath of secrecy will be given will be taken uh, will be governed by the governor what if governor would not have given that particular oath of secrecy and oath of office there is one more provision in the constitution of india that is oath by letter that is something we are going to discuss in this particular article and these kind of concepts have been asked multiple times in the examination okay so you need to see it very carefully so basically guys when we talk about when we talk about 
the constitutional provisions when we talk about the constitutional provisions with respect to the ministers and chief ministers there are certain articles i'm going to discuss first of all guys we have article number 163 article 163 provides that there will be a council of minister headed by the chief minister and the council of minister and the chief minister will aid and will advise the governor in the exercise of his function so governor cannot act without the aid and advice of the chief minister and council of minister it is provided in article 163 the next thing when we talk about the appointment of a person as a minister fine so chief minister shall be appointed by the governor and other ministers will also be appointed by governor on the advice of chief minister on the advice of chief minister and they will hold their office they will hold the office till the pleasure of the governor now this is provided in article number 164 so basically guys it has been provided that basically now you see what happened in this particular matter there was an mla made a statement resigned now again he wanted to join as a minister so he can join as a minister only when the oath will be given who will give the oath oath will be administered by the governor now governor will administer the oath has to administer an oath if chief minister and council of minister advises why because article 163 provides that the governor is bound by the aid and advice fine that is very clearly provided moreover the chief the ministers will be appointed by governor but on the advice of chief minister so that is something that governor has to do now guys governor actually in this particular matter did not right away gave the oath did not right away approve that governor said that i will study this particular matter eventually governor allowed that okay oath will be given but the article is talking what could have happened if the governor would have refused what could have happened okay so basically we'll discuss some of the constitutional provisions that we have the question comes that can the governor refuse to administer the oath to the minister and if the governor refuses will it be justified can that particular thing be done so basically article 164 sub clause 3 it clearly provides this particular thing that the governor shall administer the oath to oath of office and oath of secrecy to minister before he assumes the office and there is a schedule number schedule 3 of the indian constitution you might be knowing the schedule 3 talks about the oaths and affirmation in schedule 3 the oath of office and oath of secrecy the format and all those things are written there as well okay now it has been provided that if a person has to become a minister number one that particular person needs to be the member of legislative assembly okay man needs to be the member of legislative assembly or if there is a legislative council needs to be the member of legislative council should not be disqualified should not be disqualified and then he has to take an oath before be, 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 uh, if that particular person doesn't take an oath that particular person cannot continue is it clear or not fine now so basically when we talk about the oath oath has to be taken is prescribed by various constitutional post for example ministers ministers judges okay they have to take an oath and they cannot assume office without the oath if the cm if the cm refuses to give the oath then there is a provision that is the oath by letter oath by letter and now we will discuss this oath by letter a very very important thing so basically guys this concept of oath of letter got originated majorly around 1978 so at that point of a time vasant pai a senior advocate got elected as the member of tamil nadu legislative council he got elected as a member of tamil nadu legislative council and it was provided that if he has to if he has to become a minister okay or if he has to continue he need to take the oath there is article 188 that article 188 provides that he be administered the oath by the governor or a person appointed on the behalf of the governor so oath is to be administered by the governor or if governor is not there a person who will be appointed on the behalf of governor he can administer the oath it is provided in the schedule number 3 now at that point of a time this person this person did not wanted to take the oath before the pro tem chairman who was nominated by the governor so i told you that the person can be nominated by governor governor nominated the pro tem chairman but he did not wanted to take oath then what happened then what happened basically the petitioner signed the oath did not took the oath by that pro tem chairman that was appointed by the governor but he signed the oath in the form that prescribes that is prescribed in the schedule number 3 and that particular copy was sent to the governor with a letter in which he said that he is sending the oath because there was a delay 
there was a delay governor was not giving the oath and with that person he did not want it to take an oath so he signed it the oath and he sent that particular thing also the article number 188 was referred in this particular direction it was provided in article 188 that it is a duty it is a sacred duty it is a constitutional duty of governor to administer the oath and there should not be any bureaucracy there should not be any obstruction to restrict it are you getting it or not now that particular matter or oh, this uh, on this particular thing the matter reached to the madras high court also okay and it was provided that such kind of a constitutional requirement or such kind of a constitutional process can be proceeded so basically this is the concept of uh, uh, oath by letter oath by letter so this could have been done in this particular case is it clear or not so this is guys all about this particular article i hope that you have understood a very very uh, uh, important article that whether there is any provision because guys in mcq questions find such kind of things could be asked so yes there is a provision that is letter by oath fine i hope that it is clear and now we'll move to next article okay so guys this article uh, we have taken from the newspaper and uh, uh, understand this thing that you don't need to go too much in the detail in this particular article just we are going to see the important takeaways from this particular article so but what has happened just a minute yes what has happened president of india president of india went for inauguration of samvidhan udyan that is a constitution park okay and there she had made certain statements on the nature of constitution of india she had said this particular thing that the constitution of india is a living document it is a living document living document means that it changes it adapts itself with the changing requirement of time now even if you have read the ncert book on polity that is constitution at work in that particular book also it's provided that the constitution is a living document it changes and you see this thing that as of now 105 amendments have been made in the constitution okay what these amendments mean these amendment means that as a time changed constitution have to change constitution got changed constitution got adopted so it is an example of living document okay moreover it has also been provided by the president that the india's constitution uh, that the uh, basically the constitution of india is the foundation of india's vibrant democracy india has a vibrant democracy india is the largest democracy and that is possible because the foundation that is the constitution of india and the constitution of india is a very sensitive constitution very sensitive constitution towards all the sections of societies vulnerable backward downtrodden sections of society all genders fine it is very sensitive and all their hopes all their aspirations are included okay moreover it has also been provided that our constitution is a visionary constitution is a visionary constitution which has an which has a very good clarity okay clarity of thought about the rights of future generation so not only the rights of the present generation the rights of the future generations are also envisaged in that particular thing so guys understand this particular thing that there are the questions for example a question came that what do you understand by constitutional morality what is constitutional morality constitutional morality is to abide by the constitutional spirit constitutional ideals so the nature of constitution of india okay the aspirations that the constitution of india promises the, for these kind of a questions where there is a little bit of philosophical flair we can give this such kind of a references okay so in ethics paper number 4 also such a references can be given guys i hope that this article is clear now moving to the next article supreme court raises concern on small fishermen hit by purse seen nets purse seen nets now guys understand this particular thing fine you are not required to go too much in the detail in this particular article i'll explain why but there is one particular concept there is one particular concept that we will see here that is the purse seen fishing purse seen fishing that we are going to see okay now let's understand the article basically guys what is this present issue what is this present issue i will zoom out the article and will show you the present issue what it is all about why i am saying that you don't need to go right now because nothing concrete has come in this particular direction so basically basically guys what has happened there is a petition there is a petition that has been filed by fisher men care 
petition has been filed by the fisherman care which an which is an organization representing the interest of the fisherman community they want that the tamil nadu government order fine of 2020 which had banned the large nets to use the schools of fishes in the deep sea water fine so tamil nadu government brought a ban for using the large nets to catch the schools okay schools are the big groups of the fishes so it has been provided that this particular ban should be revoked why because the fisher rights are getting impacted by this so this is one issue that is going on and then guys at the same time what had happened basically at the same time what has happened purse seniors purse seniors purse seniors just a minute had asked the court to devise an interim arrangement by which they could operate outside 12 nautical miles before the ongoing fishing season in the state come to an end okay so guys when we talk about the 12 nautical miles within the 12 nautical miles internal waters of a nation are there so basically it, it they want that through the purse seen method of fishing beyond the 12 nautical miles they should be allowed it has been asked that the purse seen fishing could be allowed outside the 12 nautical miles fine for 15 days in a given month except during the 60 day ban that is there okay so basically this is that discussion is going on that you should allow it now up till now fine uh, that, that the discussion and that particular arguments counter arguments are going on what is important article in this what is important thing that what is this purse seen fishing purse seen fishing so basically guys if you see here there is one particular ship this one particular ship now this ship will actually be will actually be making a kind of a circular radius of net it will make a circular radius of net for example for example what will happen the ship will start dropping the net from here and will drop this particular net in a circular direction and will make a kind of a ring it will make a kind of a ring it will make a kind of a fence and all the fishes that are within this particular ring within this particular fence they will be captured okay so when we talk about the fishes there are the schools of fishes so this entire school this entire group of fish it will be captured by this purse seen method of fishing now number one this particular thing this purse seen fishing can only be done by the big trawlers by the big ships mechanized trawlers mechanized ships now the point is that if by this particular methodology fishes will be caught what will happen productive fishes the fishes that are the productive fishes the small fishes they will also be caught fine what will happen the fish stocks might be depleted okay if these big trawlers will catch a fish in this particular manner there will be no fishes for the small fishermen so first of all they are asking that beyond 12 nautical miles we will do this particular fishing because guys the small fishermen will not go at that particular stretch fine so this is the issue that has come now beyond that beyond that you don't need to go too much in detail in this particular article fine then india the next article we have taken from the business page india set to i dollar 17 billion cut in food fertilizer subsidy spend okay now what is this particular article guys all about so we see this particular thing that this particular year fiscal deficit fiscal deficit of government has increased quite a lot and as fiscal deficit is increasing because of that particular thing what is happening on financial front many repercussions have come so basically government has provided that in the coming year government will try to bring the food subsidies down government will try to bring the subsidies on fertilizer down and by that thing government will try to bring down their fiscal deficit okay this is just information that you need to keep in your mind for the for understanding the state of indian economy right now okay now dedicated question will not come on this particular line now what the government is expecting what government is expecting i will zoom out this particular article so that you can read so this box is only important here this box is only important here so to bring down the fiscal deficit center aims to curb to reduce the spending on subsidies now the subsidies are the subsidies they account to one eighth of the total budget expenditure so one eighth of the total budget expenditure is by the subsidies now government expects that it will set aside 2.3 trillion rupees for food subsidies compared to 2.7 in the present so present 2.7 trillion rupees are given in the food subsidy it will be reduced to 2.3 so by that fiscal deficit will come down 
on fertilizer subsidies. Fertilizer subsidies will come down to 1.4 trillion rupees from 2.3 in the current. So from that, the fiscal deficit will come down. And for the current year, fiscal deficit is going to be high. And the fiscal deficit will stay at around 6.4% of GDP. Now guys, what is fiscal deficit in very basic words? In very basic words, when government spends more than what government gets by receipt, there a deficit will develop. Now the deficit, very simple example. Suppose I had 100 rupees. Okay, suppose uh, I got 100 rupees as income, but I spent 200 rupees. So that additional 100 rupees that I've spent, that is my deficit. Okay, now if I have spent, I have to pay the money anyhow. So how I will bring the money? I will take loan, I will take borrowing and I will fill that gap of 100 rupees. So when government is spending more than what they get by the receipt, a deficit is developed and that deficit is filled by borrowings. Now, if the money has been borrowed, interest has to be given. So high fiscal deficit will always increase the revenue expenditure of government and as it will increase the revenue expenditure of the government in the long term the servicing of that debt will become a very big problem so therefore we aim to reduce the fiscal deficit okay so this is guys all about this particular question and now we'll move to we'll move to the next uh, the mains practice question for today so this is the mains practice question for today question reads Increasing number of cases of cruelty against animal calls for proper implementation of laws. Analyze this statement in the context of prevention of cruelty to animals act 1960. So it will be a 10 marker question. Okay. It will be a 10 marker question for GS paper number 2. Is that clear or not? So that is all guys about this particular article. I hope that you have understood this particular. I hope that you have understood this particular article. So that is all about it and with this we come to an end to the today's newspaper analysis discussion. Guys if you have liked the video I will request you that please do hit the like button to support our initiative and your lovely comments they really mean a lot to me. I read every one of your single comment every day and even I remember almost all of you by the names who are commenting please keep on commenting and thanks a lot for all your support so thank you guys that is all for today and a very good morning to all of you who have wished good morning here rajeshwari bhagyashri kajal akashdeep shumag sundari ravi kanika venki eliminati vignesh bsk ganesh chaji kajal radhika insta nagraj student pallavi vignesh bhagyashri sharon sandeep uh, uh, rabdi punam Okay, Gadam, Sneha, Rimzim, Venkat, Dur Durga Prasad, Chetan, Lakshmi, Mausami, Jalja, Scorpio, Sharon, Ram Shankar, Mohammed, Nikita, Annapurna, Lalit Kumar, Radhika, Dharamveer, Dhanjay, UPSC, Pushpa, Kirti, Akher, Kirti, Gita, Yukta, Starfish, Sathu, Sanup, Kirti, Gan Gandhi, Arti, Shelly, Koshalya, Thakurji, Thakurji. Lakshmi, Rilu, Deep, Viraj, Puja, Aru, Anisha, uh, Nilanchal, Muhammad Rafi, Viraj, Nilanchal, sir, please give us main questions. Okay. Rohit, uh, Nilanchal, Neelam, Pri. Okay. Shama Saini, Nilanchal, Varun, Bhagyashri, Sharon. Again, Mohammed zero, Mohammed Rafi zero, Lincoln, Akhil, Akshay Kumar, Sachin, Akhil. Sir, very nice session and uh, clear explanation. Recha, Santosh. Uh, okay, there's one question. Uh, sir, please tell, is there any, just a minute. Sir, please. Uh, okay, so there was a question. I am not able to find the question now where it, where it went. Explain. Uh, let oath by letter okay oath by letter is a system of oath when governor or a person nominated by governor is not able to administer the oath so an oath in a signed letter can be sent back okay so i hope that these are all the questions and if i have missed any of comment okay uh, apologies for that though i tried to answer every single comment here but if i have missed apologies for that so that is all guys for today now we'll meet tomorrow till then